Right, so what I've got now is I've got the door finished and it needs to go on here. So I've um, taken some of the paint off so I can make space for the hinges and uh, clamp, like to lock it on this side. And uh, it will open like so. So as much as possible I'm going to use the um, the parts from the air compressor. And so these were where the wheels used to connect and they already have a handy hole that I can use for the hinge. So these are going to be the hinge pieces. Well, parts of it anyway. So now to do that. And boom! So they're a bit rough but these are not rocket ship parts so this will do just fine. So on to the next part. And kaboom, there's the other two. So in a bit of uh, speed racing style lightning, I've decided to remove some skin to improve the speed of my hand. Uh, so I've got these two pieces, and they're going to line up this. And now I'll need to weld that to the door. Alright, tack welded on. So, you can kind of see they're just a bit rough. Now the idea is that it'll sit like so. So what I need to do is hold this on here with a magnetic clamp and then do some more tacks on the other part of the hinge. Uh, you can kind of see there. Oh look, a working chimney. Uh, no, it's just welding. So, okay, now it's tacked on. There's two hinges. I guess we can remove the magnetic holder upperers. See how it works. Mmm, not perfect, needs a bit of work. What are we rubbing on? Oh, we're rubbing on these square corners as touching the welding. A silly mistake, but uh, seems obvious now, but, but uh, we'll fix that. Fix it in post. Ah, there's nothing the Technicolor grinding machine can't fix. So, now we have a door that actually opens. Those will get bolted up and sort of thing. So loose. Oh! Yeah, that's why it needs to be bolted up. So um, now onto the hatch on this side. All right. So now I've got this uh, 12 millimeter bar stock. Chucked it into the lathe and get in there. What are you doing? And then just take uh, a section of end piece down to I don't know. Let's say eight millimeters. Just. Uh, about this much of it, and uh, you'll understand why later. Alright, so there's the done, just a touch under 8mm, and I will uh, show you what I'm going to do next with that. Alright, not so obvious. I called it bad names until it was really nice and angry, and then uh, I uh, put it in the device and it with a bit of extended pipe. I'm a blacksmith. So I want a matching hole here somewhere. So, Mr. Auto Punch, I would like my hole. Um, I would like my hole here, please. Nice. Right. So here's the plan. Here's my thing. Here's my. Laparoo and together they make something. So this thing goes through here like so. Other side please. And the flapperoo goes here somehow. Need to put the camera down to put it together. Right, now does it make sense? There's the handle, there's the flapperoo, and let's put it on the uh, stove and see how it goes. So, line up my bolts. Here is the flapperoo controlled by the outer handle. And just line it up and close. That is the greatest thing in the whole world.
Okay, apart from all the things that are better. That is pretty good. It's pretty good. The handle's hot. So, that's how it works. I used, once again, a bit of off-cut. I found one that had a kind of angle so that it would be able to catch on the, I don't know, body, the body part. Yep. And it works. So, we're nearly done. Nine. Twenty-one. Oh, someone buy me a plasma cutter. What the heck is this? Well, this is the chimney. So, if you're gonna pay for pretty much anything, um, you know, it's not really worth building it yourself because you can buy a kit for, you know, so many dollars, but if you're gonna scrounge it, you might as well scrounge everything. So, this is what I've been collecting for a while. I must eat a lot of beans. Oh, and some tomatoes, so that's okay. I vary my diet with tomatoes and beans and beans. And beans. Oh, condensed milk. Good to get some vitamins. I stripped the body down with methylene chloride paint stripper and then painted it with two coats of a special heat proof stove paint. That was the biggest expense so far at $20 a can. So the door works nicely. I got myself a nice fire going inside and uh, the paint is starting to cure as you can see a bit of smoke is coming off. And this chimney smells like all the food that was ever in those cans. Right, chums, what you just watched um, is a few years old now. It used to be four videos and I re-edited it into one slightly shorter video. Um, and the reason I'm here is because I had video footage of how it performed after a couple of years. That video footage has now been lost, unfortunately, and I'm in a completely different city, different location 
and the wood stove has gone to a new owner. So after about 18 months, the chimney ended up rusting out, but it was made from cans. So the amount of money and materials in that chimney, who cares? All it cost me is some beans. The next thing is I added an airflow door underneath the main door. That was a huge improvement on how the wood stove operated. Uh, enabled me to adjust the fire and it was much more efficient after that and less, less smoky. So I definitely recommend that as being an upgrade. Right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.